So when, you, um, when you're setting out to travel around Australia, one thing to really look into is preparing your van and your car properly. Um, we all know about ATMs on caravans and what you've got to understand is a lot of the ATMs are set so they can sell more caravans. For example, this van is 23 foot and it had an ATM of 2,900 kilos. So cars that can tow up to three tonne could buy the van. Well, that really wasn't of interest to us because the, the trouble is you've, we only had 400 kilos maximum that we could put in the van. By the time you put water, gas bottles um, and all your gear in, you, you can be way over that limit. So I'll just show you what we did and what you have to do to get an ATM upgrade on the van and also a GVM upgrade on the car. So in um, doing your ATM upgrade, the first thing you've got to be aware of is have a look at your compliance plate and just see what the ATM figure shown is and also have a look at the um, tear mass. So the ATM will be on the left of the compliance plate and then the tear mass is over there. In this case, we've got 400 kilograms difference. As I said, if you load your water tanks up, if you fill your gas bottles up, you put a few things in, you're already over that. Like we've got 180 litres of water, that's 180 kilograms. So that's why we had the um, ATM upgrade done. Now, what that involves is getting an engineer out to have a look. And it's also a matter of having the um, manufacturer of the caravan on board so that you can um, get, find out. See, you, you can go up to the maximum that the actual chassis is rated to. That's the important figure. In our case, the chassis was rated to 3,100 kilos. So we're able to get an ATM upgrade to below that. You can't obviously go over it because that makes it dangerous, but we've got 3080, so it gives us another 180 kilos, um, which is very handy. It, as I said, it really only is only covering the water, and we usually travel without water in the tanks and just fill up when we get to where we're going. Um, but even with all the other things, it doesn't take much to put your... So once we checked out the caravan and found we got uh, had another 180 kilos there, I thought I'll be smart and just put everything into the car, which I see everybody does. So what I did, being a Land Cruiser, we could actually, um, in Queensland anyway, I took the seats out um, and I knew that that would give us like a lot more, the seats have to weigh like 100 kilos or more, this is a seven seater. And I thought, oh you beauty, I'll be way under. So what happened, Viv and I were going to the tip the other day. Um, and I was, we just put a new air conditioner in the caravan. I knew that the air conditioner weighed 48 kilos. When we went over the way bridge, I found out that the, the car as it was, without the seats in it, weighed 3018 kilograms. And I thought, man, that's huge, because the GVM on this car is actually 3250, and I didn't have any seats in it. But that's mainly because we got a long-range fuel tank. Um, it wasn't full. We've got a boat storage thing on the top. And then we've got to put the tinny on. Consider the, other on the things like we've got the tinny to put on top of the roof racks, and I know the tinny weighs 80 kilograms in itself. So there's a fair bit Probably of weight there. Just see it, but we already had a blue plate on the car for being modified um, because the car's got the long-range fuel tank. As I said, we've also got ARB front and rear bull bars, which you think, oh, they're great. That gives us a lot more range. But you forget how much those front and rear bars actually weigh, and in our case. You know, I reckon there's a couple Probably of hundred kilos. But on your compliance plate on your car, it'll have the GVM shown. In this case, it's 3260. So I thought, well, we're going to be overloaded before we even put anything into the car. So don't just think you can load your car up because you can't go over that figure. So next step was for us to get a GVM upgrade done on the car, um, which did involve a bit as far as strengthening underneath. Um, we had to put a lot of new shock absorbers and things in and it wasn't that they all had to be done it was just that we wanted to make the vehicle extremely safe so we've actually got the new plate down there where it's modified now and now we've got like another 320 odd kilos 350 kilos or something so that should make use of it i'll just show you underneath the car what we had to do just recently i already put in heavier duty um, shocks on the front that's mainly because we're running cooper tires which are quite a heavy tire but we just had uh, new control arms done um, on both sides and redid all the ball joints, the whole lot, because we wanted to make sure the vehicle was, was extremely safe. It also has got um, strengthening 
on the control arms down here. You can probably see these brackets here. So that's that was an added bonus. That was already on the vehicle. But just to be able to carry the extra weight, your vehicle has to come right for spec. And we also put all new brake rotors and everything all around it, um, just to make sure the braking was spot on. Now in the rear end, we did a similar thing. All new rotors and brakes. We put new heavy duty shocks in, heavy duty coil springs, uh, all um, urethane bushes everywhere but also we put um, dual airbags on and they're the heavy duty ones which have a Kevlar sleeve over the top. All this work was done by Petters and we were really impressed. Um, yes it cost a lot of money but what's your life worth? That's the whole thing and the vehicle is just driving like a new car now. So all of this enabled us to get that GVM upgrade. Um, you wouldn't necessarily have to do it all but I think when you do come to do this sort of work, make sure your vehicle is really spot on mechanically. So once the engineer's finished with the car, he'll always put one of these blue plates on uh, for a modification plate, just like the other one we had on the other side for the long range tank. So now we've gone from 3260 GVM up to 3580. So that's um, another 320 kilos. So really good when you're caravanning and we're all Absolutely. The ATM upgrade on the caravan and the GVM upgrade on the car are really about the same thing. It's all to do with the chassis and the load that the chassis can carry. Um, with a car, it's obviously all to do with your suspension and strengthening that up and ensuring the braking is good, and it's exactly the same on a caravan. The difference with a caravan is you can only increase it um, to the limit of the chassis that's placed on the shed by the chassis manufacturer initially. So. You can't go above that and you've got to stay a little bit below it. So we didn't have a lot there, but we picked up another 300 kilos on the car. The costs involved, we paid, I think it was 350 for the caravan in Queensland and 700 to have the car done. That was just for the compliance work. So it can be a lot cheaper. I hear some people getting a lot cheaper, but look, we couldn't recommend Petters anymore for the car. As we said, yes, it was expensive, but boy, they've done a spot on job and really looked after so us. So I hope you got something out of that video. Um, and if you did enjoy it, please subscribe. Just press the little button, the red button down there, because that really helps us um, to keep bringing you these informative videos. And if you've got any questions, just message us, contact us through Instagram or, or um, Messenger or whatever. We've got all our details on there on Facebook as well. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much indeed.